Your Creative Force by Avian is currently available on Global Voice Radio. Talent is a flame. Genius is a fire. Broadcasting from the San Francisco Bay Area, the all-new all-hit show on creativity. Hosted by international award-winning artist and entrepreneur, Avian. You are listening to Your Creative Force. And now here's your host, Avian. Hi everyone, this is Avian coming to you from the beautiful San Francisco Bay Area in California, the USA. I am so excited being with you today. We have a wonderful show theme for today. Our radio show is Your Creative Force by Avian, and I am delighted to tell you that our theme for today is Share Your Story. I think this is a very enjoyable theme. I also think this is a theme that a lot of us may not consciously think about a lot, is what it really means to share your story. And so we're going to dive a bit deeper into that today. I think it is important for us to own our story, to know our story, to share our story, but to share it in a way that really actually is helpful and actually is making sense. I think sometimes we have one of two things going on. We either are scared to share our story because we're kind of apprehensive or a little bit skeptical about how it may be received or is it even necessary. And I probably fall more on that spectrum of why I sometimes struggle with this kind of thing. Or you are someone who really loves sharing your story. It's almost like a test testimonial to you and you're super passionate about sharing your story, but you're so intense about it and you're sharing so much of it all the time that people may feel a bit fatigued by your story. So I feel there's a spectrum and I feel that there are ways to really um, harness our story for our own good and for the good of many others. And we're going to look at those things a bit today. So that all being said... <laughs> In today's episode, which is episode 14, our theme is going to be share your story. I want to discuss with you how we can actually own our story. Sometimes it can be hard to know how to own or share our story when it comes to relating it with our business or entrepreneurial journey. What do we share exactly and with whom? How do we share it? What is the purpose of our story? What do we even mean when we use the term story as a part of our journey? These and many other aspects of sharing and owning our story is discussed. Your story is probably more powerful than you realize. And it absolutely does matter because it is a part of who you are and the deeper reasons for why you do what you do, right? We all have those internal motivations that make us tick, that make us pursue a certain business in a certain industry, and your story, your history, the impact of your life experiences, those are important things that have brought you to this place. So that does matter. But here's the thing, though. If we don't know how to share it effectively, we may find that people either won't care about our story, tune out, or it won't be as helpful to yourself or others as you want it to be. Okay, so we're going to talk about that a bit today. Your story is meant to bring light and hope into the world. It is meant to truly inspire and encourage others to share their story also. So what you share and how you share it really matters. I'm going to also today in part three share some of my own story as an example to you about how to share and what to share exactly. So that was already a mouthful. <laughs> We're going to start by looking at what is your story exactly? What do we mean when we talk about your story or my story? Well, 
Your story, first of all, has to do with your specific life experiences, both the wonderful experiences and the awful ones, and everything in between. These are the things and the experiences, the situations, the circumstances, the lemons that life gave you, <laughs> the wonderful breakthroughs you've had, all the above and more, right? These things that led you to be the person you are today, embracing the journey you are on as your authentic self. And then, of course, also as the journey pertains to you as a business person or an entrepreneurial person, these are all very important aspects of your journey. Okay, and they all kind of intertwine. You can't completely um, remove your personal journey from your business journey, and you cannot completely remove your business journey from your personal journey. Um, I think that makes sense. Let me just explain it very quickly this way. Your personal story will definitely touch on your business story, and your business story will touch on your personal story because the two influence your life, right? It's not something you can just pull apart and put into separate boxes always when it comes to your story because the two does inf they do influence each other. They do have an impact on it each other. Okay. And then the other thing, as we discuss story today that I really want all of you to keep in mind, you have to understand that your story doesn't really have an ending until you leave the planet, right? <laughs> it's not like, okay, my story started the day I was born and then my story kind of ends when I'm 30 and then that's the story I tell for the rest of my life. Your story is going to unfold for as long as you are alive on this planet, as long as you are a breathing, living person who has a unique experience being on this earth, that is how long your story will take to be told. And if you're someone who leaves an incredible legacy behind, then your story will probably continue lots and lots of years after you are not on the planet anymore. If you think about the great artists, right? If you think about the wonderful works of Michelangelo, for instance, his legacy is still with us today. His story is still being told and is still continuing and is still being interpreted and still being studied and explored to this very day. So even, I don't know, like five, six hundred years after his death and probably for a thousand years after his death, his story will still matter. His legacy is still with us and he will still be important to people all over the world. And that is because he has left a very significant Legacy, right? Someone like Steve Jobs, who invented something so incredible as Apple, this person who pushed this technology and opened up a whole new world of communication and experiences to millions and billions of people all over the world, his legacy will probably stay with us for many, many years to come, right? Probably for hundreds or thousands of years to come, we will still on earth know who Steve Jobs was, right? So your story is not exactly completely cast in stone or completely just spans a specific time frame, okay? Your story can even cross over to history of people who came before you. Maybe your family were incredible inventors and incredible pioneers. And so their story becomes your story and then your story carries over to the next generation. Do you see how I am explaining that? So <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is your story is really powerful and your story can even exceed your own lifetime, right? It's important for you to understand that because you have to be aware of the fact, not only that you have a story that you need to tell in a really optimal way and that you need to constantly evolve with, you have to also write your story and you can write your story on purpose. Okay, There are parts of your story that you can't control, uh, external things that happen to you, things that cross your path, but there, there is... There is this thing where you can actually write your own story. You can actually control your story to a degree by the choices you make. And so these are things that you need to keep in mind. And that just gives you a little bit of context, okay, for when you think about your story. <laughs> wow, I feel like we've only been into this about nine minutes and we've already covered so much territory. So let me jump into this even deeper and let's go forward, okay? When we embrace our journey in business 
as an entrepreneur, our stories become important because they can serve us really well in our continuous journey, not only to help us stay the course on our own path, being deeply aware of who we are, but also to serve and embrace others, to advise, to encourage, to uplift, to inspire. When we encounter others on the entrepreneurial journey, especially those who may not yet be as far along as we are, we have tremendous power to help them shape their journey in an optimal way by sharing our own experiences, tips, pain points, life lessons, etc. with them. But it starts by knowing what our story is in the context of business. Okay, this is very important. I'm just going to stop here and mention something quickly and we'll go into it more in detail as our show progress today, progresses today. So here's the thing you need to understand. You need not only be aware of how you tell your story, but you need to be aware of how other people hear it. Okay, you need to really be aware of that. Because you don't want your story to be unnecessarily misunderstood. You don't want people to hear your story and your story is actually really just freaking them out and not really helping them, right? That's not what you want. You have to be really clear on what it is you want to communicate through your story. And you have to really communicate that with clarity and in an uplifting sort of way. Because if your story is super depressing and your story is just filled with all these sort of details that make people cringe, you're just going to freak them out and your story is going to be a little bit confusing to them and it's not really going to help them and it's not really going to put you in a very good light, okay? I want you to realize that. Now, this is not to say that you have to pretend or you have to make things sound better than what they were, but you have to be very circumspect about the kind of details that you share and who you share it with because not everyone is capable of hearing your entire life story fire hydrant way all the time. Okay, that's a bit much. And so you need to really be very rational and very calculated about how you share your story. And for me, I kind of have a gut feel about this. In certain kind of contexts, I would only share kind of like the high level stuff. And then depending on the setting, like if I am with a group of women and I know that this group of women really struggle with self-confidence, I will go a little more into detail about my own struggles with self-confidence. But I'm probably not going to tell them every single aspect of every single part of all of the rest of my story. Does that make sense? So you really have to adapt your story to the context you're in and make sure that how you share your story, how you share your journey with others that what you're sharing and how you're sharing it, that it's actually relevant. It actually is making sense to them. It's actually really helping them. So you want to not always share everything all the time or always share just some aspects. You need to have a real big awareness of where your audience is at. Because if your story cannot be received, if the message you're giving cannot be decoded by your audience at all, then your story is not helping. Okay, and you need to always ask yourself this one question. Is this part of my story that I am going to share? Is this really relevant and helpful to my audience? That is probably the best question you can ask yourself whenever you're thinking of sharing your story in any kind of way, shape or form. So what sharing your story really is about within the context of business and entrepreneurship Firstly, many people, (laughs) including me at times, do not feel comfortable sharing their stories in certain settings. And I want you to know if you're someone who's not completely comfortable sharing your story, that is really okay. I am not going to share all the details of my story with everyone all the time because I also need to feel safe and heard when I share certain parts of it, especially if I'm in a situation where I feel it is appropriate and it will help people tremendously if I do share more sensitive aspects of my story. Then it's also important to me that I actually do feel safe and understood and heard in that environment because I'm not going to open up my heart (laughs) 
in a especially in a business setting, if I am not sure that that is appropriate, because I really do not want to cause myself unnecessary pain and grief, right? So you have the right to have sort of what we could call a boundary about how much you share and what you share, okay? You have to really guard your heart and make sure that you don't share such sensitive information that you kind of feel almost violated (laughs) after sharing it. So that's okay. I want you to be to be okay with the fact that it is okay not to always want to share your story. Okay. (laughs) I hope that makes sense. So picking the right time and place and people to share the appropriate aspects of our story with is key. If we have difficulty speaking about it, we may want to start slowly sharing some less intense things with people one-on-one. You don't have to spill your guts (laughs) to crowds of people. (laughs) That is probably not the best or the most comfortable way to start sharing your story when you feel you're ready to do so, okay? And that's normal. I think we do have to protect ourselves. We do have to guard our hearts most certainly, okay? Then secondly, There are some personal elements to your story, but not all personal aspects of your life is relevant in a formal business context. We must be aware of the specific context or setting in which we share details about our story. Not everyone wants to hear your entire life story with all the sort of details every time. You lived your story and... To you, it is very real and personal, but you need to be aware that for others, they are not looking for the same outcomes maybe that you are looking looking at. See, when you're when you're sharing your personal story as part of a business story, as part of a setting, um you have to understand that for you, your story is very real, very passionate, and you may have a certain perception in your mind of how your story would be relevant and helpful to people. But they may be looking for something to identify with, something to inspire them, something that they can take away from your story that can apply to their own life. So you have to be really, and I think this is the main point I'm trying to make, you have to be not only careful with what you share and how you share it and where you share it, but you have to be very practical with what you share. You have to provide people with some sort of practical takeaway from your story, especially if you're sharing it in your capacity as a business person or entrepreneur. It's like, okay, yes, we can all sit around the campfire and listen to each other's interesting stories. But in this kind of context, you're not sharing your story just to share your story, just so that you can have a voice and you can be heard, right? That's not why you're doing it. You're doing it actually to inspire and uplift and impact other people. So you want to give them some kind of practical takeaway from it, right? Maybe even a few tips on how they can, if they can relate to your story, how they can actually utilize their own story for their own sake in their own business journey. It's very important that we remember that. There's three aspects here. That is ourselves wanting to communicate our story. Then it is the actual thing we are communicated and communicating and then the, the way that our audience interprets it. Okay. It's the encoding of the message, which comes from us. Then it is the message itself, and then it is the decoding of the message by the audience. So you may want to practice sharing your story (laughs) with some people you trust before you go out there and really do it super much in public in a really intense way, right? So you have to understand that you lived your story and that to you, your story is very real and personal. But for others, they may be looking to relate to your story in a way that helps them. They may not want to know every sort of detail every single time. Remember that each person has a story and that the objective is not to just compare story notes, (laughs) but to actually learn and grow as an entrepreneur and to help and inspire others to do the same. You need to be selective in what you share. And you also, going along with this, you need to be willing to hear other people's stories. If a person is sitting there, especially in one-on-one situations, and they're just listening to you going on for 15, 20 minutes about your own story, but you're not even giving them a chance to relate or to share maybe some vulnerable things of their own story, then they're not going to feel heard. They're not going to feel understood. They're not going to feel like they can relate to you, and they may be putting up their guard. So you need to also not only be able to share your story, 
but also listen to someone else's story. That's very, very important. Then, wisdom is key. Being self-aware is absolutely key when you decide how and when to share your story. If you do not share your story in an appropriate way, others may not find your story inspiring. They may find it to be boring or unprofessional. They may find it too intense or too personal. This will have the opposite effect. People don't want necessarily, if someone is coming to a business setting or a business event or a certain type of um, let's say gathering in a business kind of capacity, they're probably not coming there to suddenly drop all their um, inhibitions and be so vulnerable and coming there with the intention of sharing their story, spilling their guts to everyone there, right? That's not their intention of coming there necessarily. And you need to be sensitive to that. I think with this wisdom that I'm speaking about, there's a sensitivity. You need to be able to read your audience, see where they're at, see what their comfort levels are, and kind of adapt to that, okay? Very, very important. You do not want your audience to find it's so intense and so personal that they kind of feel violated or they feel like they're being put on the spot and now they have to measure up to that and share things like that. You have to be really sensitive to your audience. This will have, if you do it like this, it will have the opposite effect. They may experience you as a victim and not a victor if you don't share it in a positive way or they may feel depressed or upset with your story or they may feel like it's too much and you're kind of putting them on the spot and they may feel a little freaked out. So we need to learn how to do it with wisdom and really read our audience. Your personal sto story, this is our last point, right? Your personal story has huge value and impact when you learn to share it well. So in part two, we are going to take a look at what to share and what not to share <laughs> and how this works. And I think this is important and I think this is very helpful to know these things. So in part two, that is what we are going to be looking at. Catch the fire of creativity. Visit artbyavian.com. A-V-I-A-N-N-E. -N -N -E. And now we return to our show with Avian. And we are back. This is Avian and we are currently with episode 14 of Your Creative Force. Our theme for today is Share Your Story. So for part two of our show today, we're going to look at how to share your story. These are just tips. I want you to understand that what I'm sharing with you today is just to help you, okay? This is not like the Ten Commandments of sharing your story and it's all cast in stone. There may be some aspects of what I'm sharing today that you feel totally apply to you and some aspects of what I'm sharing today that you may feel, oh, this is not really me. This doesn't really feel authentically like the way I would do it. And then you adjust that, okay? Nothing I ever share with you guys are like the Ten Commandments. It's not like the Ten Commandments. I'm not trying to tell you. I'm not trying to control you into how you do this. These are just tips that I have found helpful. I always share with you guys things that I am living through or that I am battling with. I sometimes still battle with sharing my story and doing it in an appropriate way. And <laughs> sometimes still when I share it and how I share it, I can feel very awkward about it. And it can be kind of frustrating for me sometimes not knowing exactly if I'm sharing the right thing at the right time. I think it's hard to always know that because your story is so personal and so subjective to you and our understanding of the world tends to be subjective. So I think it's hard to see ourselves in this. And so all I'm trying to do is encourage you, come alongside you and tell you, hey, here's some things you may want to look at. Here are some things that may actually help you in your own journey of sharing your story, right? Not everything applies to everyone. Not everything applies in every context. So this is really up to you, which parts of this you want to apply. And if you feel overwhelmed by all the content you're um, getting access to from me today, I want you to just take a deep breath and take it slow. Start basic, okay? If everything I'm telling you today seemed really advanced, really kind of overwhelming to you, I just want you to realize that you can start where you're at with what you have. And on that note, before we jump into how to share your story... 
You might feel like you have a really crazy story. (laughs) You might wonder and you might worry, like, would anyone even relate to that? It is too weird. Like, people are going to judge me for it. That's normal. And I'm going to help you to know how to share it without having that effect and without having to constantly deal with that kind of fear. Or you might feel that you are someone who has a very boring story. (laughs) I don't know about you. They are, for me, I kind of have a mixture. There are parts of my life that are kind of straightforward and probably kind of (laughs) boring. But there are other parts of my life and other parts of my past that those parts are pretty darn intense and pretty exciting. So I think most people have kind of a mixture. You will have some aspects of your story that may be a bit dull and some aspects of your story that may be super exciting. And the trick is to know the difference and to know which which parts apply to which context when you are sharing your story. And if you think your story is really super boring because you're kind of comparing your story to the persons next to you and you're like, oh, well, they have this really crazy, cool, amazing rags to rich story or this or that, and I don't really have a story that can compete with that. You have to understand that sharing your story is not a competition. There will be people, hundreds, thousands, or even millions of people who will relate to your story, whatever kind of story you have. Your story is unique. There will be experiences in your story that are not like that of anyone else. But then at the same time, your story, no matter how (laughs) intense or how basic your story may be in your eyes, there are people who will identify with you. There are people who will find great value in your story if you learn to really share your story in an optimal way. So with all that being said, how to share your story? Well, first, I think it's important that we learn to own our story, right? You need to really think about, meditate about, and even write down a basic outline of your story, specifically the parts that you feel apply to you as an entrepreneurial person, if that is the kind of setting you're going to share your story in. Um, And just for clarity, you're going to share a different kind of intimacy in your story, depending on the setting, okay? If you are with personal friends that you trust and that you walk a very deep path with, you are going to really spill your guts to those kind of people. But that is a very different kind of setting than being in a business setting. So when your story is all over the place or way too elaborate, people cannot track with it. You can lose your audience, okay? So remember that the story you will tell, the things you will share in a formal business setting will not be the same as the things you will share with a confidant over coffee or an intimate group of people that you trust. You want to be authentic and vulnerable in what you share, but you don't want to do it in a way that makes people cringe or feel embarrassed. Okay, I'll give you a quick example. Let's say part of your story includes something that happened to you where you streaked across a football field. (laughs) You may not want to tell (laughs) your future boss your story about streaking across a football field because you know that that can create a very bad impression, right? But if someone that you encounter on your journey feels super embarrassed about something they did in their past and they worry that that thing is really going to hurt them and you've already obtained a lot of success in spite of the fact that you streaked across a football field, you can go to them and you can say, hey, when I was young, I streaked across a football field once and it didn't end my world. See, I'm still doing my thing. I'm still being successful and I dealt with it and I got over it. And let's see what we can do to manage the super embarrassing thing in your past that you constantly worry about coming up because I did it and I can help you do it. And in that way, it would be really appropriate. You could actually use that thing you did that was maybe super embarrassing. You can actually use it to help someone, but you have to pick and choose your battles, so to speak. (laughs) You're not going to want to mention that story to your boss or your newest client the minute that you interview for a new job or a new project, right? (laughs) So that's the thing, Um, reading the people that you're listening to, knowing when it is appropriate to uh, share certain things and not just blurting out stuff, right? That's the thing, you can't fake vulnerability. You can't superimpose vulnerability or authenticity. You can't just, vulnerability, vulnerability, and authenticity 
those are not just about blurting out stuff that are embarrassing, okay? That's kind of a very immature way of doing it. Um, <laughs> now, I also have mercy and grace on people sometimes because I can share my story in relatable ways to people, especially people who are younger than me. And I don't know what it is about a creative environment, but my kind of environment tends to bring out people's stories. <laughs> and so sometimes people will blurt out pretty severe stuff to me and pretty personal things. And I'm sitting there thinking to me, this is like really highly inappropriate that they just shared this with me. But you know what? I have enough grace and enough mercy on people where I can go, you know what? This poor person probably doesn't have a lot of people who understand them. They probably have been walking around with this thing inside of them forever, and they probably just finally felt okay enough to share it. So I'm not going to reprimand them and go, oh, you shouldn't share that, and then write there and then try to tell them how to share their story. That's not the place and the time for it either. There is a sensitivity and a maturity that can help you also help others in sharing their stories, but also have mercy on people when they do blur things out. And when they do cite something out of context or inappropriately in the inappropriate time or place, because I would, and this is why I would extend that grace to people, if I am the one who accidentally says the wrong thing <laughs> at the wrong time, trying to share my story and I'm totally messing it up, if that's me, then I would want the person across from me or in that situation with me to have mercy on me. You see how that works? So at the same time, though, you really need to own your story first and you need to learn to really not make people cringe or feel embarrassed. At the same time, have mercy with people if they do that thing, you know. And if you are the one, have mercy on yourself also and um, trust that other people will have mercy on you. You're not a perfect person. And like I always say in my shows, I want you to really be okay with not being perfect. I don't always get all these things right. And you're probably not going to get them right always either. And those very polished public speakers that are up there that seem to have it all together and be able and are able to share their stories in a perfect way with perfect language perfectly all the time, they probably had a lot of practice doing that. And some people are naturally very good at doing that sort of thing. It takes time to learn it. For me, it is a learning curve that does not come natural to me. So I have to really think things through take my time and be very patient with myself in learning how to navigate my own story and how to own my own story. And that is really okay. So I want you to feel totally at ease and totally comfortable in your process and help in the, in the process also others to feel comfortable. Okay, that goes a very, very long way. Then ask good questions about your story and bounce it off someone who knows your entire story and who can help you decide what to share, what not to share, how to share it effectively. Why does my story matter? How can it inspire or help others? How can I share it in a way that hits the mark? How can I share it in such a way that others will feel comfortable sharing their story also? I do this often with myself when I'm alone and since I drive in my car a lot, this is something I do in my car. I'm going to just give you a real practical tip on this point of ask good questions about your story and, and practice your story and bounce it off. What I do is I really want to know how my story sounds to people. So what I do is when I am alone in the car, right, I have to travel some somewhere Often I have to travel for an hour or longer to get to one of my business locations and, and have appointments and meetings with people. So that hour, instead of listening to the radio or instead of playing music, what I do is, as I'm driving, I am doing this. I'm saying it out loud. I'm asking myself questions about what I'm about to do. I'm going into this meeting. I'm going to maybe share a part of my story in this meeting. I'm going to have to listen to others share a part of their story. We're going to have to come up with some creative solution, whatever the context of the meeting might be, even if it's not my story or if it is my story. What I do is I ask myself questions in the car out loud and I try to answer those questions to myself. And then I also say 
what I want to say to this person or this group of people out loud to myself in the car so I can hear what it sounds like so that I can know that I got my story straight. It's like practicing a speech, right? But I get very nervous and (laughs) I don't do so well when I practice speaking in front of people in front of a mirror. I find that extremely intimidating. So what works for me is while I'm driving, so I'm busy with a task, so my mind is not completely zoned into, oh my gosh, I'm going to freak people out. I'm going to stress myself out and I'm not like getting into anxiety mode because I'm already preoccupied with driving the car, right? So I can simply just let my stream of consciousness come about the topic that I'm about to address or the story I'm about to engage in when I'm going to share with people in this particular setting. And I just let my consciousness flow free free, and I just talk to myself. I do self-talk. Um, I describe what I'm going to say to myself. I ask myself questions. And that really helps me, kind of gives me a confidence boost as well. So that when I actually do get to my destination, I do stand in front of the people. I do have to ask them the questions and discuss with them or speak to them or share my story with them, whatever the case may be. I actually feel confident about what I'm doing. And I actually feel like I've rehearsed this. I got this. I know what I'm doing. I know what I want to say. And that really is helpful to me. So that's a little practical tip if <laughs> if that helps any of you at all. Then, thirdly, you want to pick the place and time to share it. Maybe you can share some of it when you are invited as a public speaker, or maybe you can share it one-on-one with someone who is facing tough situations in their personal or business lives. But be aware of the context, and when you share it, be very clear and very concise. You have to guard against rambling, okay? Remember what I told you before? If you just sit there or stand there and you just ramble on and on and on, but you're losing your audience or the person who's sitting in front of you feels like you're not even listening to them, you're not even giving them a chance to share their way that they relate to your story or ask you good questions or maybe open up about their own situation, then you're kind of going to lose the person that you are addressing and you don't want that. Don't ramble on and on. People will tune you out and they will feel that you are making everything about you. See, if we just ramble on and on about our stories, we can make it seem like we're very self-absorbed with our own story and it doesn't read well. It doesn't come across very well. Um, because everything is not about you, right? Or if you just ramble on, um, you can come across like you are seeking validation instead of trying to embrace and come alongside them. So when you're telling your story, sharing any aspect of it, try to keep it in the back of your mind that this is really not about you. This is about the person in front of you, helping them, motivating them, inspiring them, bringing some light into the world, shedding light on this particular aspect of your journey and your story as others may relate to it and may find value in that. Keep it other focused, okay? Give people practical things, share with them things in a way that make them feel like you're embracing them into your story, not just like you're rambling on and you want to seem like you know it all or that this is all about you or that you are the victim who wants empathy because it's very easy to miss the mark when you come across like you're just there for the attention or you're just there to kind of blurt out your own truth. (laughs) You have to keep your audience in mind. It is not just about you, okay? So that is like when it is all about you, that is when you sit with your therapist or your best friend or your husband, then it can be all about you. But you have to really mind this, okay? Then, fourthly, how to share your story. Leave out too many sordid details. For instance, if you went through a divorce, which had a huge impact on your personal and business life, and your journey was significantly affected by this divorce, people may not want to hear every detail about every fight you ever had with your ex. It may be wise to just mention something briefly. Like, my ex and I had a difficult time because we fought a lot and leave it at that, okay? Because if you have a story that is really intense with a lot of very heartbreaking, like heartbreaking details and intense details and sordid details and lots of dirty laundry going on. If you start making your story just about washing your dirty laundry in public, 
then you're kind of missing the mark as well. And you can make yourself look really insecure and you can make yourself come across like you're just basically looking for people to be on your side or to pick sides in the story. And that is not really your objective. And if you're telling your story and you find yourself veering off into too many negative details or sort of details or intense details, you have to become aware of that and just steer your story back to the previous point. That's always a good tactic to deploy. So remember doing that. Okay. And on that note, okay, our next point, point number five, stay classy. Be careful to trash other people when you share your story. You may need to deliberately leave out certain names, places and details so that you don't come across as someone with a vendetta or a victimhood complex. Ooh, this is really something you want to steer clear of. Like sometimes when I am speaking about, I give a lot of examples, as you know, Um, let me put it to you this way. I give a lot of examples, as you know, throughout my show, through all 13, even this episode 14, I give a lot of examples of things that have happened to me, situations I have been in, people I have met, um, people that have made huge mistakes and have had huge successes. But I never use their real names. I never describe the details of the situation in such a way that I give away who this person is. Because it can come across really badly. It can look like I'm trashing people. And you know what? You can even get into legal trouble if you do that. If you come across like you're public sh- publicly trashing people, you can really get yourself in a bad spot. You won't only look bad, but you can actually face legal consequences for doing so. So you really want to stay classy. Okay. Be careful to trash people when you share your story. Leave out names, places, and details so you don't come across as someone with a vendetta or a victimhood complex, wanting to bash those who did you wrong. Make it clear that you are simply sharing your journey and that you wish everyone well who was or is a part of your journey. Like I can sit here and I can tell you guys, my ex and I, we are fine. I never share anything about my divorce or anything about my ex in any way, shape or form to make him feel bad, to make him feel like he's completely horrible or anything like that. Because it's not like I was an angel, okay? I own my own stuff. (laughs) And it's also the fact that he is my kid's dad and I do respect him for that. And, And I don't see the point of just trashing people, okay? It's very easy in your story, especially if you have not yet gone to a place of healing or acceptance of things that you've been through in your life, it's very easy to go back and just bash and trash people. You want to be very careful of that. And on that note, I'm going to give you guys a quick example of that. Um, I refer to this in more detail in one of the other episodes, but a very public and very prominent example of this for me was when um, I ha- there were two businesswomen that I dealt with uh, about a year, two years ago. And they had a really bad breakup in their business. They joined forces and they had a bad breakup. And they had a really prominent public business. And their business involved public speaking. So a lot of people know them. They're very public. They're kind of like almost celebrities in their field. And it was really bad. Okay. And they both of them had two completely different reactions. The one woman went ahead and she totally trashed the other person in public. She did the most horrible things. She gaslighted. She made it so that third parties got involved who weren't even supposed to be involved. And it was just a hot mess. And it made her look terrible. The other women, and and let me just say it to you like this, both of them had reason to be upset, okay? It was not like a matter of one person was completely wrong and one was completely right. Both of them had reasons to be upset with the other. But the one went into bashing and trashing mode and the other one, was, she was so classy about it. She never trashed, she never bashed, she kind of just went on her way, kind of went out of the spotlight for a while, regrouped, came back, and then just made a statement to say, listen, I know the other person is bashing and trashing me, I would just advise you to not get involved because you're not aware of the facts and we are legally dealing with the situation. And I just felt like I would rather in future work with the women who remained classy because it spoke volumes to me of her character and whether she was guilty or innocent of the stuff that the other woman accused her of 
was none of my concern because I know that the truth has a way of coming out anyway. But that was a good example of my, to me, of remaining classy. And I took it as a personal lesson. And so for my own future <laughs> purposes, I am going to remember it. Like if someone really does me in in business, I need to steer clear of bashing and trashing and remain classy. It's very easy to get angry and start trashing people in your story or in your daily journey in your business, especially if you really feel wronged by them. But it's not worth it. It's going to backfire. It's going to cost you clients. It's going to make you look bad. So keep that in mind. Then remember that though your story is part of you, you may want to be careful about acquiring cringeworthy labels as a result. Okay. Don't share your story in such a way that you get labeled as the bitter divorcee or the momzilla or the nightmare boss or the utter loser. Right? <laughs> when you share your story, don't just share bad stuff or things that make you look bad. Like share good stuff about yourself too. Share the positive parts. Don't just share your losses. Also share your wins right? Make sure that you always put yourself in a positive light when you're sharing it. Make sure you always share the outcomes, how you overcame the situation. What did you learn? How did you learn it? How did your experience improve your life and made you into a better version of yourself? You are not a victim, but a victor. So remember to share your story in that light. Otherwise, you will simply sound like a mess, okay? You don't want to sound just like a mess. There needs to be a positive outcome to your story. Your story always needs to end on a high note and be positive in its conclusions. You do not want to leave your audience with negativity, concerns, or depression. <laughs> you do not want to leave them with any sort of vibe that is really unpleasant for them, right? You want to leave them with a can-do attitude, positive reinforcement, a sense of not being alone in their battles, a sense of hope and light. Remember that. And with that being point number six, remembering that your story is part of you, but you don't want weird labels, we're going to move on to point number seven. If you are apprehensive or circumspect about sharing your story, start by sharing it one-on-one -on -one in comfortable situations with people that you trust. You should never pressure yourself or allow others to pressure you into sharing things you are not ready to share. You need to do this in your own time and at your own pace. Okay? There is no law that says you must share your story and you must do it now. Okay? Sometimes, especially if you have a really great story with a lot of meat to it and a lot of depth, you will find people who hear little parts of your story and they will go, you must publish a book about it. You must start doing public speaking about it. But you know what? It's a vulnerable thing. And if you're not comfortable, give yourself time. Give yourself the grace of healing and walking through some parts of your story. And when you are ready, you will know and you can share it. There is no reason for you to share things that make you uncomfortable and that actually can even cause you to be hurt even more if you're not ready to share it. So don't let people talk you into sharing things and doing things that you really don't feel okay with. You have an absolute total right to say no to people. Okay, you can put down a boundary. Remember that. Okay, and then point number eight. The only time that you can truly share a lot of details while still keeping the above mentioned in mind is when you write a book specifically about your story. In a book, you can go much deeper and into much more detail. Have your book edited professionally and have a lawyer check it to make sure you do not say things in there or mention people that may disclose things that can get you sued or trashed in public for exposing others in a really bad way. You want to be careful about it. You may think it's innocent. You may think you're not really saying something bad. But if you mention someone's real name or a situation that everyone is aware of and everyone knows exactly the true person you're speaking about, you can find yourself in hot water. So you don't want that. So invest in having a good publisher and a good editor who's who knows the ropes, who already has been there and done that, who can really help you work through that. And in a book, you can also decide, do you want, and this is actually... Point number nine, and this is our last point for part two. 
Decide if your book will have a personal or a professional angle. There is a huge difference. When you're writing a personal book, you can even publish it as fiction, right? You can change all the names. You can change the story a little bit. It doesn't have to be exactly your story. Um, or you can actually publish it as an autobiography that totally tells your story, but you can still hide people's identities. Like I say, you do not want to come across like you're trashing people. That can really make you look bad unless you're doing it as a professional political commentator and you're criticizing politicians in your book. That's a different story, okay? But when it comes to your own story, you really want to be careful about that. You do not want to put things out there that can place you in a bad light or in a difficult legal situation, okay? It's really important to work with a good publisher and a good editor on a book. I'm not a super famous author or anything. I can't <laughs> give you real super high level professional advice, advice about this. But I can tell you that right now I am looking into possibly starting to work on a book or two. And I am currently specking this out. And there's a lot of pitfalls. You really need to be careful. Okay. Um, I can't speak into this with much greater depth. But I want you to really be aware of this. So you are very careful. Okay. Then we are going to conclude part two right here. And in part three, I will share a little bit of my own business journey with you just as an example, just as a quick example of how you can in a very short amount of time, share really good tips and details about your story that can actually inspire others. So we will go on with part three after the break. Talent is a flame. Genius is a fire. And now we return to our show with your host, Avian. This is Avian, and we're back with part three of our show today. Share your story, episode 14 of Your Creative Force. I'm going to jump in real quickly here. Kind of going to put myself on the spot, <laughs> but I want to give you just a quick kind of high level example of what we've been talking about today, how you can share your story. Now, let's say, let's try and pick a setting. Okay, so I want to share my business journey with young entrepreneurs. Let's say I want to share a quick version of my story in my business, my business journey with some younger entrepreneurs who have not um, reached some of the levels I have reached yet. And I want to super encourage them and super tell them that they're totally going to make it and they're totally going to be okay. And I want to leave them with a few practical tips. So if that's what I want to do, this is how I would share my story. Now, I want you, before I share this, to know something. I promise you, I am sitting here, I'm doing this off the top of my head. I'm not doing this from any notes. This particular part, I'm not doing it from previously created content. I am going by my gut and I'm sharing, I'm going to pretend now that I'm sharing my business journey with young entrepreneurs who need some encouragement and maybe a few basic tips. So here goes. Hi, my name is Avian and I own two businesses. I own an art-based business that sells fine art and I own an art academy through which I teach art. And right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to open up a third aspect of my art academy, which will also help to coach people and train people and do public speaking and um, help people to succeed in their own journeys in their own creative journeys and to live their own potential. So that's in a nutshell what I'm doing. Um, and I'm here to tell you guys today that whatever you are looking at doing, you can totally do it. Okay. I came as an immigrant to the USA in 2006. I didn't even have a work visa for the most part in my first three, four years that I was here, I had to really overcome a lot of culture shock. I didn't have a ton of money. I can honestly say that all I really truly had going for myself was some level of basic experience in the art industry and then just a really deep passion and desire to succeed at something beyond the obvious. I really had a desire to want to live my potential and I wanted to create a business or a movement or something like that to inspire others and to really make a difference where I'm at. OK, 
Okay. Now, if you know anything about the art industry, you would know that the art industry is not exactly a very easy or a very obvious industry to make it in as a business person. And I can tell you, I fought many uphill battles. Okay. First of all, a lot of people in my family thought I totally lost my marbles. They didn't understand that I was serious about this. They told me, why do you want to do something so difficult? Just get a job. It will be far easier for you. But I had a dream and I had a vision and I had a passion. And I started using my first few years in the country where I couldn't really consistently work because you can't consistently work if you don't have a work visa. Um, you need a work visa. So I could only work jobs when I was able to have a work visa, which wasn't the case all the time. But when I did have the work visa, I really started honing my skills. I tried to learn the culture. I tried to learn sales. So I did some sales jobs. And these are some cool tips for you guys. If you're new in your industry or you're looking at gaining experience, go work for someone else for a year or two so you can have the experience. If you've already done that, you can also research your industry. Make sure you really know your industry as good as you can before you jump in with both feet, okay? You can learn as you go as well. So that is also something you can keep in mind. So basically what I did was I just learned my industry. I joined art organizations. I tried to learn to walk the walk and talk the talk. I started creating art. I started entering my work in shows and in contests and I started winning and I started building a reputation for myself, not just among my peers, but among clients. People started buying my work. And as a result of that, I was eventually able to build a pretty significant business where I do fine art on commissions, where I sell my work at art shows and art galleries. I'm now looking at expanding more on an international level with that. And I actually also was able to start an actual art academy, which is now an LLC, which is a limited liability company. And I'm trying to build it into C Corp eventually, where I want to have multiple locations of my art academy me in many different locations, right, throughout California and hopefully eventually throughout the world even, right? I have gathered a great team, very important to gather a great team around you when you want to do this kind of thing. And then I also am now looking at a third option where I'm getting involved in coaching because I do this really cool thing about helping people find their creative force and living their full potential. And I'm actually even doing a radio show now and hosting the radio show which does get turned into a podcast so that I can actually take my message out into the world, increase my brand's footprint and eventually have a business beyond my current two pretty decent and successful businesses. You see how I did that? That was very high level. That was very quick. That was almost an elevator pitch. <laughs> Not quite. It was still about five, six minutes, but that's kind of the idea I want to leave you guys with. You do not have to start off sharing your journey or your story in a super intense and personal way. What I just shared is very high level. There's a lot of juice packed into it, but it's very sweet and short. People can get a great idea of what I do. And now if I was in the room with these people, I could tell them, okay, so ask me questions. Let's talk about what you guys want to do. What is your dreams? Let's look at practical ways to help you. See how that works? So yes, I think that's a good example. And with that, I'm going to end our show today, episode 14 of Your Creator for Share Your Story. And I'm going to love and leave you with the following quote by Maya Angelou. Now, I want this to be food for thought for you until you can hear the next show, right? So, by Dr. Maya Angelou. Remember, it is very important that we tell the truth. Don't tell everything you know, but do tell the truth. And I'm going to love and leave you with that. Always tell the truth and be authentic. Good storytelling until next time. Talent is a flame. Genius, a fire. Visit us at artbyavian.com. Tune in next time as we explore your creative force. Thank you for listening.